What's up, guys? Tuesday, BFR. My name's Ed LaCara, coming out of Dallas, Texas, in my clinic here. Um, clearly, you can see what the name of my clinic is over there on that smart board. Um, so yeah, so welcome. I hope everybody is doing well. We are getting really weird weather here in Texas. It's not even, it's not even a billion degrees yet. I don't understand what's going on, but it is what it is. So uh, what's up, Abe? Good to see you here. Um, first thing I like to do on these Tuesdays is answer any questions that might be arising uh, around BFR. And we always get a variety of different individuals live on these. It could be some are clinicians, some are strength and conditioning specialists, some are just end users that are using it for themselves. So um, I like to answer questions first and um, see if I can create some clarity around uh, BFR and programming and any questions people might have. So you can just type in any questions in the chat section. Um, you can throw in, you know, where you're from and say hello, like some of my friends already have, which is awesome. And I'll give everybody a minute to kind of see what's, what's popping up right now. All right. William is asking, I haven't figured out if uh, cuffs should be removed between sets of dis different exercises, not each set. Yeah. So there's, um, what's really interesting is um, it appears that we get similar results for strength and hypertrophy, whether we use what's called continuous BFR or intermittent BFR. So You know, I put the cuff on. Cinch it up nice and tight. I inflate it. I do my exercises. Some people do BFR where they do the exercises without the cuffs and then they inflate it. My feeling is that you'll need more load to do it that way. So I teach it, um, which is continuous BFR where I inflate the cuffs and I do exercises with the cuffs on. I want you to deflate the cuffs between exercises but not between sets. Uh, there's been some literature where they've deflated the cuffs in between each set and they haven't gotten the results. And I think the primary reason is you're not trapping the metabolites, you're not creating uh, true fatigue in the tissue. And um, so we're wanting to cause that fatigue so the body has to adapt. Um, so I'm gonna do 30 repetitions, take a 30 second rest, 15 repetitions, 30 second rest, 15 repetitions, 30 second rest, 15 repetitions. I'm gonna deflate the cuff for up to a minute. I'm gonna go to my next exercise, reinflate and go at it. That keeps our time of inflation right around uh, six minutes for each exercise. If I'm doing uh, like a walking uh, protocol, I will inflate and then I'll walk for 20 minutes maximum. Then I'll deflate for five to 10 minutes and then I'll reinflate and I can go for another uh, 20 minute session if I want to. But you know, more is not necessarily better, uh, better is better. And what we've seen is that bouts of 15 minute intervals of BFR has been 
beneficial for increasing strength and size of the lower extremity and also um, increasing uh, cardiovascular endurance. So, um, you know, if you're really wanting to get after it and that's the only cardiovascular work that you're doing, um, 15 minutes to 20 minutes in the morning, 15 to 20 minutes at night uh, will accelerate um, the adaptation effect. Um, Steve asks, amount of time using a vibration plate with BFR. So you inflate the cuffs to, um, I would do it at 60% of limb occlusion pressure in the lower extremity. Then you're going to step on the plate um, and you're going to be there for, um, if that's all you're doing is standing there, I would do um, uh, probably 20 minutes. Um, you're going to get the best effect in what the literature did in their study, looking at stem cell production, um, which Steve, I think would be good for you for your knees, um, is to do some partial squats. Um, so you do like just some partial squats on the vibration plate, probably going to have to have your feet fairly wide. And when I say partial, I'm not going all the way down. I'm just going to kind of get my feet kind of wide. I'm going to sit. Okay. And I'm going to do my partial squats um, and you can keep, you know, as long as you're not going full range of motion, you can keep the, that on for, let's say 15 minutes is probably the max I would keep it on. Um, you can always do that multiple times a day if you wanted to, twice a day would be no problem. Again, you're not causing any muscle damage when you don't go to failure. So um, there is really, you have to get, you have to recover from the peripheral fatigue, but there's no damage per se, exercise induced muscle damage, um, EIMD that you're having to recover from and needing more time in between sessions to repair your tissue. So, uh, you know, 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes at night would be, um, very, very reasonable. Um, Abe asks or says, I'm always amazed how quickly I bounce back from an ex example tennis. I also found that in faster I move, the less faster you move. Oh, interesting. In other words, when I push myself harder, the less negative magnifications and the faster I recover. Huh, that's cool. Um, anything else popping up? Normally for a hypertrophy program, one might do two to three exercises per body part in a session. Do you recommend continuing that with BFR or limiting to a single exercise? No, I would do multiple exercises. I would do, you know, you might do different forms of the same exercise. So if I'm doing like a bicep, I might do straight bicep curl. I might do a hammer curl. And then maybe I do a concentration curl. Um, I mean, you'll be pretty taxed by the time you're done with three exercises for the same movement pattern, meaning elbow flexion. Um, you can combine it with elbow flexion, elbow extension. Um, there would be, that would be great. Um, two exercises for the same movement, like an elbow flexion is probably going to be enough. And then, um, some sort of ancillary movement. So like, um, you know, barbell bicep curl or a dumbbell bicep curl. Then I'm going to go to um, a hammer curl. Okay, a little bit different uh, muscle group. It's still the same movement. That might be enough. You might be pretty tired after that. And then you could go to like a tricep extension or something else if you're doing upper body. Um, I typically do isolated exercises after I do um, uh, integrated or compound exercises. Compound exercises mean multiple joints are moving at the same time. So um, I might do a modified push up or a modified row. That's a compound exercise. And then I would finish with two exercises to the bicep or two exercises to the bicep and one exercise to the tricep. That would, that would cook you uh, pretty well. I do think I need to be doing more examples of these, um, of how I would integrate it as a workout. Um, not just kind of more of how I use it, which is, uh, I do my normal workout and then I'll use it as a supplemental, like, you know, my biceps have never been big by any means. Um, so, you know, we are getting to summer, getting a little bit of pump would be good. So as adding, um, bicep and some tricep work, I mentioned shoulder work as what I call like ancillary two to three times a week after my normal workouts. Um, 
can help increase the, the size, especially things, you know, we don't get a lot of size change in high intensity exercise workouts that I'm, you know, what I mean, like is like CrossFit or you're doing like a, um, let's say uh, Orange Theory, you'll get stronger, you'll get fitter, but you're not going to see crazy size changes, hypertrophy changes, because that's just not the way that we're lifting in those uh, formats. Um, so doing some ancillary work, um, two or three exercises afterwards um, could help you grow some areas that, you, you know, maybe necessarily is, aren't growing like the way you want, or your body's not as adapt to hypertrophy in those areas. Most people have trouble with bicep and with calf um, or glute. Um, great. Any other questions? Any other questions today regarding uh, BFR, BFR programming? I haven't done BFR in about two months, except once a month, yet I don't feel that I'm sliding back. I'll resume more of a schedule once I get the equipment. Am I correct in feeling that I'm not sliding and I'm retaining what I have? Sliding, Abe, as far as like size? Or strength? Losing strength and muscle growth through activity. Uh, yeah, you're probably not losing too much. I mean, we're pretty resilient creatures. I mean, where we'll see a lot of atrophy is um, with total disuse. Like I put a cast or a brace on my elbow or my wrist. Yeah, you're going to see some a pretty significant amount of atrophy, but just normal everyday life. You'll see some, but you won't see nearly as much. So you're probably maintaining just with your normal activity. All right, anything else today? We're right up against that 115. Feel as strong as sometimes more. Yeah, that's awesome. And I think that's what's important about trying to do a one rep or a modified one rep max every once in a while. So you can kind of gauge where you're at and what changes you're making and um, you know, we can only change what we measure. So, um, you kind of want to know like, well, where was I last year compared to this year? And when I've done, you know, BFR twice a week versus four times a week, you know, we're all different. That's why I think journaling is really important when there's something super important to us. All right, y'all. Well, it's 1.15. Uh, if there's not any more questions, I really appreciate everybody being on. Um, are we on schedule with the equipment? Yes, sir. Just talked to a headquarters today. They are like Santa's elves, just putting crap together and getting them out. So um, we should be all caught up, um, you know, within the next week or so, I would guess. Um, they're saying no longer than two weeks. Uh, new orders are, I think, a couple weeks out max, but um, we should be we should be good to go. And then um, once we get caught up with the, um, once we get caught up with all the cuffs uh, back ordered, then I will release a online um, education for level one and level two. Um, I just want to make sure people have their cuffs before um, we commit to a course and, um, and then we don't have them to use. That would be bad. So we should be caught up and then we can get a class out. I'd like to do a virtual level one class sometime in late May, early June, and then we'll do a level two immediately after that. Um, so that way we're covering all of our bases for what everybody's needs are. All right. Thanks you guys so much. Have a great week and I will see you next week. Shoot me your questions. Um, you can always shoot them at ed at edlacara.com or on my social media, which is this usually edlacara on Instagram or uh, Facebook. I think Facebook is actually Ed LaCara, uh, DC PhD. All right. Thanks, you guys. Have a great week. Bye for now.